The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus took Peter, James, and John, his brother, and led them up a high mountain by themselves, and he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as light. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, conversing with him. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Lord, it is good that we are here. If you wish, I will make three tents here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud cast a shadow over them. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell prostrate and were very much afraid. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Rise and do not be afraid. When the disciples raised their eyes, they saw no one else but Jesus alone. As they were coming down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, Do not tell the vision to anyone until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This gospel passage about the transfiguration is an interesting one for a lot of different reasons. Again, this is one of those one of those gospels I could probably preach on various aspects of it for hours on end, but you guys are probably tired anyways. It's daylight saving time. So, one of the things that really catches me. And I don't think a lot of people realize about it because when we listen to the scriptures at Mass, we we hear it out of context. We're not reading along in the whole gospel and seeing where it fits in the mix of it. In all the gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, where we have the transfiguration story, they all have it towards the end. Why? Because this was happening on the way to Jerusalem. This was happening in the context of heading towards Jerusalem and heading towards the cross. It helps us understand what Jesus was doing. When Jesus takes Peter, James, and John up the mountain and is transfigured before them, he's doing this to prepare them for the cross, to prepare them for Good Friday. It's hard for us to envision this, but like, We are used to the Easter season. We are used to the concept of Easter. It's just natural to us, of course, Jesus would rise on the third day. That's a no-duh statement to us. But put yourself back in Peter, James, and John's shoes. Imagine being there on Good Friday. Even if you weren't right there with Jesus, but you were from a distance watching and seeing Jesus crucified. What would that have done to your faith? What would it have done to your faith to look upon the person that you thought was the Messiah, you thought was God, and you saw him slowly die on the cross? What would that do to you? Would you still be able to say, I believe in him. I believe that he is who he said he was. Or would you be sitting there going, What did I get myself into? I've just spent three years of my life walking alongside this man, and he was a great teacher. But if he was just a great teacher, what what did I give everything up for? What was the point of all this? Because, you know, this may surprise people, but usually when someone dies, they stay dead. This is normally how it happens. This is what you expect would happen. How much would it have shaken their faith to watch Jesus be crucified? It's hard for us to appreciate that because we expect Easter. We've been raised since our youngest days expecting Easter. They weren't. They weren't expecting him to rise three days later. Yeah, he told them, and we have it in the scriptures that he told them, but they were all going, I wonder what he means by that. Jesus took Peter, James, and John to see him transfigured, to encourage their faith 
in those darkest moments. He gave them this unique, particular experience to see just a glimpse of his glory, a glimpse of his power, a glimpse of who he truly is. That when Good Friday and the crucifixion would come, they would have the opportunity or the ability to say, I know this isn't the end. I don't know where this is leading, but I have seen too much to believe that this is where it ends. Yeah, their faith was shaken, but there was some part of them going, I don't understand. I know there has to be more than this. I've seen a glimpse of his glory. The truth be told, this isn't just what happened on that mountain all those years ago. This is also what Jesus does with each one of us. Each one of us, God gives little glimpses, little special moments where we know he's there. And there's a reason. It's meant to strengthen us in our darkest hours, in our darkest days. You guys are showing up to Mass on a Sunday. You're showing up to Mass on a Sunday when you've got one hour less sleep because you went to bed at the same hour you normally do. That means there's already been some moment in your life that you've said, all right, I know him. Think for a moment, just just think for a moment. What was one of those moments where you just really knew God was present in your life? Just think for, close your eyes for a moment. And think about what was that moment in my life where I really knew God was there for me. Those moments exist for a reason. Because each one of us is going to have a good Friday. Each one of us is going to have a day of darkness, a day of doubt, a day where it's going to be hard to say, I believe in Jesus Christ. Each one of us is going to have a day that we're going to look at what's going on in the lives of our family members, what's going on in the lives of people around us, maybe what's going on in our own life, and we're going to to say, how can I believe right now? And what we're called to do is do the same thing that the apostles did on Good Friday. And look back to the transfiguration. Look back to that particular moment and say, I don't know what's going on now but I know that he is real. I know that he is real and I know that he loves me and cares about me. The transfiguration was an important moment for Peter, James, and John to strengthen their faith when things got dark. May we look at those times that God has really made himself known to us. May we lean back on those times when we hit those moments of darkness. And may we say that simple prayer, Lord, I do believe, help my unbelief. I love that prayer. Lord, I do believe, help my unbelief. As we continue entering deeper into Lent, as we continue to walk towards Good Friday, may we reflect back on those special moments of knowing God's existence and presence and care in our lives. And may it strengthen us for those dark days that truly from the depth of our hearts we can say, Lord, I do believe. Help my unbelief.